So we're standing here at the Philadelphia Museum of Art in the Picasso and the Avant-Garde in Paris exhibition. And a lot of people don't know that the word avant-garde comes out of military usage, and it means the first, the sort of front wave of soldiers in any battle. And I bring that up in front of this painting because this is Picasso's mournful elegy to his lost bohemian youth. And it includes the figure here of Guillaume Apollinaire, who was a poet and a critical champion of, of Cubism. And he dies in the First World War. He receives a head wound at the front. He was fighting for the French army. But he also makes it back to Paris alive, but then uh, falls victim of the Spanish influenza pandemic. So Picasso makes this work as a kind of homage to this fallen friend of his. This actually is a Cubist concert. There's three players in, in, in this wonderful Cubist concert. And this is, has been interpreted as Picasso. And you have the red and gold of the Spanish flag. He's a Harlequin figure. And Picasso, many times in his work, portrays himself as Harlequin. Then you have Apollinaire. He's the white figure. This is Piero playing a recorder or a clarinet. And you see the music on his lap. And then finally on the far side is a figure that's been interpreted as Max Jacob, the, the French Jewish writer, who in 1921 joined a monastery. And that was the year that Picasso painted this painting. So all of this is, is meant to be Picasso's homage to these friends that he felt he would never see again. And also his lost bohemian youth. He's now going to move on to a neoclassical phase of his work and leave behind that kind of decade-long investigation of cubism, and especially synthetic cubism that you see in the sort of flat bands of color here. Notice also the background with these sort of plus and minor shapes. Obviously, it was a tablecloth or some sort of decorative device in the studio in Fontainebleau where he painted this work along with its pendant at the Museum of Modern Art. I also think that you can read it as the graveyards of World War I. And that brings us back to this idea of the avant-garde, because when that term was used before the war, it had a feeling of innovation, of, of we're the leaders, we're, we're the ones who are battling it out and leading the fight. But it has a poignant sense after the war, because so many of, of the avant-garde fell, and their lives were changed forever. Um, some died, some came back and were never the same. Brock receives a serious head wound. So it was a calamity for, for, the, for the French avant-garde, and I think that it took a long time for modern art to begin again after the war.